Hello, and uh, thank you very much for coming to our newest uh, webinar for the Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar series. Uh, my name is uh, David Pothier, and uh, I'll be assisting today, but our main presentation here will be done by Nauman. Uh, just a quick little run through as to who's here. Um, as I said, I'm uh, from uh, Manchester, New Hampshire. I'm an AutoCAD or, uh, technical support specialist. Uh, Nauman is one of our expert elites, so he's actually uh, not an Autodesk employee, but he's uh, a great asset to us and has been helping out for many months during the webinars, and he's going to be doing our main presentation today, and he's out of Ohio. And the man behind the curtain uh, helping to answer some questions today is uh, Bryce uh, Thelen, and he is out of our Lake Oswego office. He's also in uh, Autodesk technical support. So before we get started here, I just want to run a quick poll like we usually do. And just basically want to know if this is your first webinar or if you've been to one of these in the past. And it's not working. Let's try this again. Oh, I guess we won't do that one. It says it's closed. Uh, so we'll try a different one. All right. We'll try to see which uh, Autodesk product you're using. Not sure what happened with the other one, but looks like we got a, a kind of a mixed bag here. A little over a third using AutoCAD, almost a third using LT. All right, and we'll go ahead and uh, close that and share it. So you can see about 37% using AutoCAD and 19, almost 20% using uh, one of the verticals or actually more than that, including Civil 3D and MAP, so that's great. All right. So let me go on from there. Um, so before we get started, I uh, just want everybody to know that uh, you can ask questions in the chat window if you haven't been to one of these before. Uh, we'll answer as many questions as we can online and also at the end if we have time left over. Uh, session is being recorded. And uh, you'll find links to all of the materials, including the uh, data sets and stuff, in the chat window or in the registration reminder or the post-webinar survey. Um, if you're new, new to the webinar series, we've been doing these for over a year now. I've lost track of how many we've done, but we've done uh, somewhere around 70 or 80 of these. And we basically do it in uh, four different topics. So uh, back to the basics, beyond the basics, or so more advanced topics. Uh, third dimension, which deals with things like working in 3D and rendering, and then tips and tricks. And uh, so this one falls under uh, the um, back to the basics, I believe. I forget. Um, so you can watch the uh, previous w webinars on YouTube. There's a link here on the on the uh, PowerPoint slide to get you to those. If you are um, do you know somebody that wants to join and, and sign up for the webinars. There's a link over on the right-hand side where you can sign up. There's also a link to the Autodesk forums, so great information there. And if you want to provide feedback and help uh, people or help Autodesk design or influence what's in the next version of AutoCAD or LT, there is some uh, links there uh, that will get you to the uh, customer council um, forums. Um, if you're not familiar with the Autodesk Knowledge Network, uh, this is a great resource for all things about Autodesk, everything from uh, general help to uh, articles written by tech support to uh, downloads, hotfixes and such, um, troubleshooting information, etc. So it's just uh, knowledge.autodesk.com and it's a great, great group of information here. So just a quick overview here as to what we're going to be doing. Um, and I'm going to be covering uh, external references, uh, so you'll get a quick overview of what XREFs are, or, or what we shorten it down to as XREFs. Um, issues dealing with pathing and such when you have a, a XREF that's not resolved and how to deal with that, and then just some other settings and stuff that you should be aware of when dealing with XREFs. So with that, we'll go ahead and pass this over to Nauman, and he'll get started with the presentation.
Okay. Hello, everyone. How are you? I'm just going to get my screen going here. Okay. Thank you very much for letting me present today. Uh, and I really appreciate you joining me and uh, Dave and Bryce. Um, today we're going to talk about external references. And uh, Dave mentioned it'll be a basic in the beginning, but uh, we'll get into tips and tricks at the end uh, and during the webinar as well. So I hope you get um, uh, great information out of it. Uh, so. Let's see, so what is an external reference? Well, in AutoCAD, uh, external references are anything basically that uh, you want to attach to a drawing. There are certain formats that are only available uh, that you can attach to the drawing, uh, which is, I mean, basically the DWG file, an image, a DWF, you can attach a DGN file, which is MicroStation. Uh, you can also attach a PDF, uh, and it has been the case, but uh, 2017 added some new functionalities in terms of PDFs. Um, you also have the opportunity to attach point cloud, and with something new with 2017 is the ability to attach Navit's work NWD model. So you can do coordination uh, overlays uh, uh, on your underlays, rather, on your drawings, uh, and uh, be able to work uh, directly within AutoCAD. So that's a really nice feature that they added. So basically, when you attach something, you're linking uh, an object, uh, another file, into your project or into your host file. Um, I'm going to be using the host um, as the file that you are bringing the X reference in. And uh, let's uh, look at uh, what are the other um, things that we need to understand uh, with the XREF. So why do you want to use XREF? Uh, but before I say that, uh, let's talk about what XREF versus external references. So according to official Autodesk uh, glossary, XREF is referred to as drawing um, uh, files linked into the mod, into the drawing itself. Uh, so I'm going to use XREF uh, for that purpose. Uh, those who have been using XREF for a long time, uh, know the value of it, uh, but we use it extensively in our workflows, uh, especially um, even if it's a small company, you, our biggest thing that you can, uh, first thing you can do is make the title block a X reference uh, as opposed to a block. So what's, what are the other benefits? Basically, the X references allow you to keep the drawing smaller. Uh, they also, um, allow you to have the latest and greatest copy. So let's say if you have a team working on other drawings, uh, you have the ability to reload what they have uh, made the changes, and then you see the changes uh, in almost real time. Um, so that allows you to make sure that the drawing is not, your drawing is not out of date, and you are working with the latest and greatest information. It also allows multiple people to work on a project. So you may have uh, multiple files uh, that uh, a person may be working on the base map of the site. Uh, you may be composing the sheets. Uh, so that's another benefit of using X references. Is. Uh, and X references are like blocks in AutoCAD, but they're externally referenced. So they appear sometimes as blocks. Um, even behind the coding, it does. Uh, but in general, they are uh, they allow you to control a lot more uh, layering and whatnot. So the blocks are basically part of your current drawing. Uh, however, X references, which is in this case, it, this drawing has multiple X references, uh, which is the base and then a couple other existing drawings and the legend you have uh, in this project. Um, they are basically linked in and updated as you open the file. So anytime I open the file, I get the latest and greatest of that. So let's, uh, before we begin too far into it, let's talk about what this palette is. So I'm going to close this palette for a second and to show you how to get into that palette. No, I'm in, uh, I lost your display for, for um, can you just uh, make sure you're sharing your screen again? Uh, okay. Is that working? Um, um, is it working now? 
I'm not saying anything. Bryce, can you confirm if it's, if it's displaying okay for you? Yeah, I see it. Okay, it's just on my side then. Okay, because I was looking at the audience you were showing. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry about uh, the, the little woke a moment. Woke a moment. Uh, so uh, let's talk about uh, how do you access a uh, reference. So basically, you are trying to bring in a drawing into your project or into your file, which is your host file. Um, and what I will do is, is if you are doing that, you go to the insert you're trying to bring in. Uh, and uh, what I, there is an option right here it says insert tab reference panel. And there is this small arrow which brings up the external references palette. This palette allows you to work with the X references in your drawing. You can do several um, commands, uh, perform several commands on it, make changes in this uh, palette. We'll talk about what those are in a, in a little bit, but let's uh, talk about how this palette helps you uh, visualizing what is an external reference. Uh, so if I click on this PV base, notice that it highlights in the drawing window, and it allows me to kind of see, oh, these are the objects on that uh, X reference. So if you notice, I click on the legend, and the legend gets highlighted. And actually, this is my actual drawing itself. So um, that's one way to work with X references. So let's uh, also look at how the commands are working uh, within the X reference uh, palette. So as I showed you earlier, you can easily attach a drawing uh, up front. And we're not going to talk about the other objects here. Or we're just going to talk about drawing. And if you are planning to attach a drawing, you basically go click the attach button. And I'll show you in a minute how that works. Um, there are several other commands. If you right mouse click on um, an extra. Uh, you will be able to make uh, issue some commands rather than typing them uh, very quickly. Uh, as opposed to also you can do is if you select an X references and you get the contextual ribbon, uh, you have some uh, basic commands available. Uh, however, if you needed to manage the pathing, we'll talk about how that works. Um, you have to go to the external references pan palette. Okay. So let's uh, attach an XREF in my drawing. Uh, I'll go to the, again, drop down, attach an PWG, or I can click on the insert reference panel and click the attach button right here. I will browse to my folders, and today I'm using a civil data set just to make sure that the civil guys are happy because I many, many times I've seen we were using the architectural and we see a lot of civil uh, 3D people joining us so I thought uh, maybe just want to make sure that uh, I use some of that data set as well. Uh, so let's look at this. I click on that attach PB legend. That's my drawing that I want to attach. So why do I want to get the drawing attachment? Why do I use the legend? So the legend is basically something that I want to repeat from drawing to drawing. And I don't want to have it as a block, because if it is a block and I make a change, I'll have to update like 10 drawings if the 10 drawings are using it. In this case, I only have to make one change, and I'll uh, demonstrate how that works in a, a little bit. Uh, but let's look at how you uh, attach a drawing. So it's basically very similar to attaching a block. I mean, inserting a block, you're basically attaching instead of inserting. You browse if you wanted to bring a block in. You browse if you wanted to bring an external reference. Um, then you look at the insertion point. Uh, typically, you say specify on screen. In my case, I'll do that. I'm not going to worry about the scale. If this is a legend, it's one to one in my paper space. Um, the path type, we'll touch on that a little later. I'll leave it as is. Um, but a good practice these days is that you have to have a relative path, which makes it a little bit easier. Right now, I can't use a relative path because I have not saved my drawing. That's one of the limitations that the relative path needs to be relative to the drawing. So right now, I haven't saved the drawing. That's why it's not giving me that option. 
So uh, we'll talk about what the reference types are, but let's click OK. And uh, you can basically click on inserting that uh, XREF, attach that XREF. Let me repeat that one more time for you. So again, I went to attach TV legend and click open. Again, set that drawing up and insert it on the paper space where I want to. Now, this one, I can attach it to multiple drawings easily. So let's open another drawing and look at how I am going to attach this to a, another drawing. So I'm going to open my site layout plan. And let's attach that one more time. This time, I'm going to use a, another command called x attach. And uh, right here, the legend, open. In this case, I'm going to switch this to a relative path, which is a good practice to do. And why you want to use a relative path is because of you can just transfer the folder. And as long as the structure is the same, the drawings can easily be transferred from one server to another, from one computer to another. I'm going to click OK. And, uh, attach that extra very quickly. And I think I have a moment, as Renee has said. Attach one more time. Open, click OK, and click. So now I have this attached. So what, what is the real benefit of this uh, multiple of them? Let's say we wanted to fix an issue in this case. So I am going to double click on the X reference. I'm going to edit it in place. This is called the reference edit, ref edit. I'm going to click OK. And then I can, I'm making the changes as I need to. And I see that the lines are a little bit, you know, shorter. They don't cover the whole thing. They don't line up. Um, maybe I wanted to change something else in the drawing. And my storm looks like this. I know it doesn't, but Let's, for argument's sake, do that. Now I can easily click on this Save Changes. AutoCAD will uh, save the reference changes that I made. And now my X reference is updated. So what benefit did I get to just update it? I can do that with a block. Well, if I go to my other drawing, if I get a notification that says, hey, somebody has updated the external reference. Do you want to reload it? Yes, I want to get it, the most up-to-date copy of it and notice that it's updated as well. So this is a very, very excellent benefit of using X references. So let's talk about now uh, some other um, um, items that affect X references. One of them is basically how you would reload. I showed you one way. Um, you can just right click and reload it easily. Then the other one is basically let's look at unloading something versus detaching. So there's an option called detach versus unload. A detach option basically completely removes the X reference from a drawing. So I will right click and detach it. Do not erase it. Use the detach command because that removes all the references from the system. But if you delete it, that extra reference and link is still in the AutoCAD drawing. You want to make sure that rather than erasing it, you want to detach it instead of that. So when do I want to use a unload at that point? So let's say if I have a reference uh, that I just want to bring in just to kind of take a look and make sure my drawings are correct. It would be the architectural plan just basically load it in, but I don't want it to show up every day after day. So what I'll do is I'm going to right click on it and unload it. This releases it from the memory. It doesn't show up. No worry about ma managing layers or anything like that. The next time you reopen the drawing, it'll still be unloaded because it persists throughout uh, through the savings and of reopening the file. Um, let's say I want to work on this again. I'm going to look at this drawing. Uh, I need to make sure that I can see the reference. I'm going to right click on it and basically reload it quickly. 
And now the X references that I was looking at has been restored. Um, there's a couple other options here uh, that we're going to touch on uh, in terms of we talked about the pathing. So let's uh, dive into a little bit more detail. So if I right click on this drawing and if I look at the options available, there's one called path and you can convert one path to the other. This is a nice feature that they added maybe a few years ago. I really like that. Uh, let's say PB legend. So whether it is re referenced it is, uh, as a relative or as a full path, what does that mean? So it is found in my folder, but the saved path is this point backslash PB legend. This is a Windows convention. Basically, it says within that same folder this drawing is found. Um, as, I, as I said before, that it's easy to, for you to kind of take away the drawing folder, move it to another server, or move it to another computer, and keep working, and you're, you won't have the problems of not having XREF available to you. Um, so um, the other option was the full path. If you notice that um, in this case, um, image, the save path is the um, a full path. I'm sorry, this one. Oh, have a look a moment again. Let me attach another X reference quickly as a full path to show you what that looks like. So if I look at that PB legend, it hard codes the drive letter, uh, basically. So if I move this drawing, it's going to look for the X references on my C users and my name and uh, in my profile directory. Uh, that is basically not, makes it harder for uh, transfer drawings to other people. And when they get the files, they get this error again saying, oh, these X references are not found. We'll talk about how to fix those issues, but uh, just wanted to point that out, what a full path versus a relative path is, um, and how you can switch between the two. So let me save this file quickly. My grading file. Now, since I have saved it, I'm able to convert this um, one to a relative path. As I said, relative paths are much, much easier to work with. So all I do have to do is right click, path type, make relative. And now I have a relative. If I save this drawing somewhere, copy it over to another computer, I'll be able to easily find this X references. I won't have any situations where I can't find my drawings, which you see that like right here in this case. I have some images in the, uh, to show you later. Uh, but notice that I can't find them. Uh, AutoCAD said, oh, I can't find these uh, drawings right now, but let's solve that problem. Um, so if I look at this uh, image, I said I won't talk about, but this is a very good example right now to fix this uh, and demonstrate this issue. Um, so if I click on this attached drawing and it says it can't be found, it has been moved or something like that, and if you get drawings from consultants that use full path, you can easily convert uh, those paths. What needs to happen is basically what you do is you go to the saved path and click on those three ellipses, the ellipses button right here, and then uh, browse to the folder where these images are stored and click open. Now they are available in my drawing. I'm, I'll fix this one as well. Again, one more time, you go to the save path, you click on the ellipses right here. You have to highlight the name just like you are editing it, and then you can click on the ellipses to browse. And I'm going to select a drawing or an image or PDF or point cloud or whatever that is, but this is how you fix an external reference, um, pathing issues. At the end, if we have time, we'll talk about how we can do it in batch. Uh, hopefully, I'm able to get to it. But for, again, these are saved, full path, and I'm going to make them relative, make relative. And now notice that it is dot dot images and attach. And this, again, is a Windows convention of which directory things are in. Um, so that brings us to 
a very good um, point about what is an attached versus an overlay. Um, I will insert another X reference in this drawing. So go to the model space and again attach another one. And let's say maybe this is the grading. Here uh, you notice that it says reference type. This reference type is overlay or attached. Um, if I have a drawing that is attached, and let me go to this graphics, I'll come back to this dialog box again. So reference type, whether it's attached or overlay. Let me switch to the other drawing back where I have the images set up. Right here. If you connect it as an attached object, so in this case, let's say this is my plan right here, the grading, and I have another plan that is attached to it. Notice that this C drawing shows up in a, a, and when this A drawing is attached, it then carries over the C drawing along with it, and the master drawing or the host drawing will see both A and C. That is what attached means. Basically, it is a nested uh, X reference, and it carries throughout the whole linkage that it has. Uh, in the case of an overlay, uh, let's talk about what that does. So, like in this case, the B drawing again is attached to the A drawing, but notice that it is uh, connected as an overlay. And uh, when this A drawing is brought into the host drawing, you basically see only A and not B. The B is coming separately from it. So, what does that help me, Naman? I can't. What should I do this? When can I use this? Um, the attachment is good for, let's say, if you have a grid. Let's say you have a grid attachment in the plan, or that, uh, I wanted to make sure that some of the data that I bring in in this drawing is carried forward to another one. So let's show you how that works. I reference this drawing as an attached drawing, this legend. And I'm going to attach this layout plan into another drawing. So I'm going to X reference this again into the attach drawing, layout plan, and say open. And I'm going to, in this case, I'm going to overlay or attach. It doesn't matter, but uh, let's select overlay in this case. And I'm going to place, it's going to be a big drawing because I placed it in model space, but, but let's look at what that does for me. Notice that it has these images that were attached, brought in through the site layout plan. Um, but I can't understand which one is attached or which one is nested. There is another view that you can use that's right here in this case, uh, which is this list view, which you, is the default, then next to it is the tree view. If you click on the tree view, you can see that when you bring in site layout plan, it will also bring in the base, the EX641, this, the legend, the images, along with it. I mean, do I really need to see those here? I don't think so. So what I'll do is I'm going to say, oh no, these objects should be overlaid instead of Attached. Yeah, um, and Nelman, then, uh, Nelman, uh, can yeah. I ask, interrupt you for one second? There's a was a good question that sure. uh, relates exactly to what you're talking about right now, and uh, the question is, uh, how come sometimes you see a file attached but you can't detach it? And I think that the most common situation there is is what you're seeing here, is you couldn't detach site layout, um, you know, the image, because it's actually attached to the other file. It's nested. And when you look at it in the tree view, you can see that it's actually a nested um, file instead of um, in the other view where you can't really differentiate between what's in the current one and what's nested. Um, yes, uh, thank you very much for pointing that out. It, that's an excellent point. Uh, but as, as I said, you know, if you have nested objects, uh, nested X reference, it's hard to see that in this list view because I mean, in this image, I can tell because there is this uh, pipe symbol between the two. Uh, but in the case of drawings, it doesn't do that. I don't know why, but maybe 
if people join in the customer council and I should recommend that to them, say, hey, can you have that? That's a very good case of joining the customer council for. But let's look at this um, tree view and then it allows you to see all this nesting um, within the uh, references that's happening. Uh, that's basically example of an attached. So let's fix that issue. I don't want the legend to show through. I don't want the site, the images to show through in this case. So I go back to my site layout lens and I'm going to go back to my external references palette. Uh, let me close it, bring it up again just to make sure that uh, people understand how to get back to it one more time. So I go back to insert this arrow key, click on it, and then again look at these legend, this legend. So right now it says type, it is attached. Right click, I'm going to right click on it and it says X reference type, whether it's attached or overlay. Well, I want it to be overlay because I don't want it to be attached as you notice right here. You can also change it at this point as well. If you don't want to right click, you can do it through the details window. I'm going to detach this, I mean make it an overlay. Uh, I am going to, I don't think images you can do that uh, functionality, but uh, with DWG uh, is the only thing that works with attached and overlay. So let's save the file and somebody, you call somebody, hey, can you fix this issue for me? And uh, yes, I did fix it. I'm going to go back to my drawing. I get a notification. Hey, somebody has modified this drawing. Let's reload it. This is a really nice functionality where you can just click and reload, but let's not do that. I am going to right click on this in this case and reload the old school way. And when it reloads, it notice that PB legend disappeared in this, from this list. So that's what it means that overlay will not carry over from this point onward uh, into other drawings uh, versus attached will carry over. So, I showed you how to convert um, the pathing from relative, absolute, or no path. I didn't cover no path, but no path means that there is no path on it. Uh, but there is a little bit of uh, functionality of the no path. If you do not have a path associated with the drawing, and I convert a drawing from a uh, path drawing with a relative or full, I go back in and I say, oh, make it a no path, remove the path basically. What that does is basically notice that there is no path saved. That means if the, all these X references should be in this folder. However, AutoCAD has a really nice functionality. It will look under many other locations as well. Uh, it'll look in the current drawing folder, which is this host drawing is in, it will also look under your files tab in the, so when I look at the options dialog box, which is application menu, options, and under files, if you look at this support path, AutoCAD will look in all those folders for this file if you have no path associated with it. It will also look in the actual AutoCAD icon and it will look at the start in as well path for this drawing. And what that allows you to do is basically uh, save the drawing in, and transfer it. And if you have a flat system uh, of folder and drawing, uh, this is helpful to save it just say no path. There is one more feature that is very well, uh, unused, I think, I mean, and at least uh, I didn't know much about it till recent, um, which is the project file search path. So you can define these project paths uh, for your, um, uh, let's say I'm working on project A, project B, project C, I can assign different paths to this, uh, each project and a path to the project. I'm not going to get into too much detail, but what that does is it you can select, oh, I'm working on project right now, project one, project two, whatever that is, that's called the project name uh, system variable. And it asks you which project name it is. And I can say project one in this case. And now 
it will look for all those extras in that project file folder for you. So that's a, a really neat feature that you can use uh, to organize your project uh, this way. So now let's talk about some other feature sets uh, when it comes to X references. Um, hey Dave, uh, any questions before I get into a little bit more advanced stuff? Uh, no, um, there was a question about you know, sharing files with others, and uh, I mentioned that you'll be covering eTransmit, so uh, I'll take care of that stuff. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, I just wanted to take a breather, too. <laughs> so, yeah. so let's talk about binding and uh, inserting. And uh, you'll see I will trip on bind, bind, and bind, insert, um, and I'll always make a mistake on it. It's just like a tongue twister for me, uh, at least. So what does that bind and extract mean? A bind and extract basically means that you are trying to take that extract and convert it into a block. That's what that is uh, within the drawing. So it loses that uh, a dynamic update capability from another file. Uh, because you are making it um, this case uh, it, it inserted in the op, in the current drawing. Uh, what's the case for it? Um, sometimes we have record drawing uh, to send to the client. Uh, we will uh, bind it so the client doesn't have to deal with all our fancy elaborate uh, uh, folder structures, uh, and rather they just get one file with everything in it. And uh, we'll do that in this case. Uh, there are some limitations, and I'll talk about that, what those are. But let's look at this guy right here, which is this, uh, which is the legend again one more time. I'm going to right-click, and it says bind. And you, ha you can bind either extract, which is drawing, or DGN underlays. Um, so I'm going to bind, bind. I always twist on this, as I said. So what does that do? Uh, let's click on it and let's figure out what the differences are between the two. Okay. So I'm going to click OK. And uh, now if I look at this, this PB legend disappeared from my external references. And this becomes a block. So if I go to my properties, uh, and I select that object right here. It says name PB legend, and it is a block reference, as opposed to if I click on my title block, which also says it's a block reference. And that's when I was saying that AutoCAD kind of treats it like that. But in the back end of it, uh, there is a lot more to it uh, where it says in here, that it is an external reference as opposed to the, uh, sorry, and that title block was not. <laughs> so if you notice that it says an external reference, I made a mistake. <laughs> the title block is not an external reference. Um, so uh, notice that it says external reference, and uh, the save path, in this case, there is no path, and the name of it, and what rotation, block, uh, you know, uh, size, and whatnot, um, it is. Um, so you can look at the properties and figure that one out. Um, but let's look at what that did when we bound this object. Okay, so where the best place to look at it is the layers dialog box, and I'll cover some layering um, now, uh, basically. So um, if you notice that if I scroll down all the way, this PB legend had one layer in it, basically, and it says PB dash legend dollar zero dollar legend. Uh, when you bind bind uh, an X reference into a drawing, it will convert. It will retain the name of the X reference with this uh, delimiter delimiter in the middle, which is dollar one two three four, and then the name of the layer coming from that. When is the binding beneficial? And I'll show you uh, when when I insert a drawing. Uh, in a second. So we're clear on this, I hope. Uh, this is the delimiter it puts in the middle. Uh, and then if you are looking at X references itself, uh, you can see what layers are, uh, reference layers 
they are, have a little bit uh, uh, half tone to them compared to the layers that are currently in the drawing right here. Um, if I look at want, I can go into the X reference layers only and where I want to be able to use those is if I want to control uh, whether I want to see this X reference layer or not, freeze it, colors, I can change all my base colors to black and white if I wanted to. Uh, so I can go in, select all those layers and freeze them and maybe not. Change the colors. So I'm going to make it all gray for some reason. And what that does is basically update my background and converts everything to gray that is on that X reference. Uh, so you can control all the layering of an X reference attached to it. A little bit I'll talk about there's a variable that's important, but we're going to be able to touch. I'm not going to touch on those too much. The variable name is viz retain, the B I F retain. And that controls whether this layer settings are saved or not. So that's the layer right here with retained. By default it should be one and I would highly recommend leave it at that. Uh, so let's quickly do what an insert does. So if I right click on this PVEX61 uh, which is uh, right here, EX61, right click, extract type, oh, bind and bind insert. What that does is basically it will lose all the layering uh, of the, the name of the X reference and just bring in the layers of the other drawing. If you already have a layer existing in this drawing that matches, it will uh, assume the properties of the current layer as opposed to the bringing it in. Where it's useful, I talked about the uh, owner's um, record set, let's say. Uh, if you have multiple layouts, you want to make sure that you retain the elaborate freeze pause that you have within those viewports. You want to extra bind bind it and instead of extra insert insert it, you know, or extra bind insert it. Um, so that's uh, what the bind and insert does. Uh, let's talk about two of my favorite tools um, and uh, one of them is the e-transmit. Uh, what that is, is I think it started as a, well, extra, uh, express tool, I can't remember, maybe yeah, I think it did. Uh, and but now it's available to AutoCAD LT uh, and uh, also in the main product, of course. Uh, the way you access it is what that does is, uh, let's say if I wanted to send a drawing uh, to um, a consultant or um, somebody that needed to look at this drawing, um, I can easily do that and rather than figuring out, oh, I got to send this drawing, this drawing, this drawing, this drawing, uh, you know, where all the drawings saved. I don't have to worry about uh, all those uh, issues at all with the e-transmit functionality. I'm going to close this for a second. And where this is, is hidden under is uh, application menu, publish. Oops, wrong one. Publish. Click on the arrow right here is the e-transmit. Again, application menu, publish, click the arrow, and get this e-transmit. Uh, of course, you have to save the drawing before you can uh, e-transmit it. But what that does is it figures out all the uh, um, items that are needed for the X reference. And it says, okay, it'll grab all the images, it'll grab all the plotter definition files, it grabs all the X reference files, um, as well as the sheet set. Uh, I really don't want to send all my sheet sets and everything like that. I just need to send them the basic stuff. I can easily uncheck them. Um, and if you can, you can look at the files table, which is the flat view versus a tree view. Uh, the tree view is the default uh, in this case. Um, and um, if you notice right here, it says select a transmittal setup. What this allows you to do is set up how you you want to send it every single time. I want to always send it as a zip bundle. I want to zip it and send it. I don't want to create a folder and uh, say, you know, create a zip again and then email them, however that is. Or sometimes um, clients or 
uh, other consultants ask, oh, I need to save down to version 2007, 2000, whatever that is, you can easily customize and create those transmittal setups so you don't have to constantly make those changes. Uh, so the way you do it is let's talk about that uh, right here. It's transmittal setups. Right now I have save as 2000, but I'm going to select the standard. I'm going to create a new from that. And uh, let's say we create a zip and uh, send something like that. And what this is is send transmittal package type folder or zip. Well, we want zip. Uh, here you can select which different formats you want. You can go down to 2000. Uh, I'm going to leave them as is. Um, maintain visual fidelity for annotative objects. Uh, that's a separate topic, but basically your text will uh, look exactly the same, hopefully, uh, as you have intended here uh, in that um, uh, scale itself. And it's going to ask me for, prompt me for the name. Um, and here it's asking me, hey, do you want to put it in a folder structure? No, I just want to put all the files in one folder. I don't care. I'm just going to send them the drawings and so I, they don't have to hunt for my extras and my folder structures. Uh, you can set, set the plotter, bind the extras. No, I don't want to bind first the drawings. I'm not going to worry about it. Include the font. Nah, not really. I'm not going to include my materials any data links, any photometric files, which Victoria covered last week, uh, no cheap data sets. And I also don't want to include any of my unloaded X references as well. So I'm going to click OK. And now I have this zip and send and click close. And what that will do is now I don't have to notice that I don't have to uncheck anything for the sheet set or fonts or anything like that. It's ready to go for me. I'm going to click OK. I can add also, I forgot to mention, I can also add other files. I mean, it doesn't have to be anything to do with AutoCAD uh, or uh, uh, let's say I wanted to send this DWF file or whatever it is, I can attach that as well. So you can add more drawings, click OK, create a zip bundle, save this, and it saves it onto, the, uh, onto your computer. And I'm going to browse to that. And hopefully, I'll be able to find it. And right here is my zip bundle. And notice all the drawings are available. You can send, email it and be done. Okay. Now, let's talk about my favorite tool that uh, is hidden from view by default. Uh, and that is the reference manager. So I talked about, well, it is painful to kind of go go in and change all these paths that are not found and whatnot. Somebody moved the folder, renamed the folder. Now I have like 100 drawings that I have to rename, uh, repath. I mean, that's going to take a lot of time. Um, I really don't want to do that. I'm not in the mood. I'm all about efficiency here. So what I'm going to do is uh, not even work in AutoCAD at this point and launch a separate software that has always been there and it's called Ref manager. And uh, let's launch that. What that does is basically it allows you to modify the path in uh, bulk. And the uh, way it works, I'm going to add the drawings here. And let's pick this uh, right here. I have an R. And this is my architectural ref manager, what I had done was I renamed this folder from basically REF to ref, uh, to XREF, uh, basically. So I'm going to just select all my sheet files that are here and click open. What it's asking me is whether do you want to bring in all the attached and nested uh, X references. We talked about XREF attached and overlays or just the first level. Now I said I want every Everything. And you can see that it has, you can walk, see what fonts are in the drawing. You can't make changes, but you can see whether those fonts are found on your computer or whatever you are testing it as a result. Same for plot configuration, plot styles. If you are switching servers or standards or whatever, this is a good way to kind of at least check your work. Any shape files are missing? No. But this is a real 
benefit right here. If you look at the X references, uh, notice that you have this status not found. This view is really hard to work with because I have to do basically one extra at a time. Um, there is another view. If you go to this view menu and say list by drawing. If you list it by drawing, what that allows you to do is it makes changes much more faster. Uh, if you see this guy right here, uh, you have a flash icon on it. Uh, it's very hard to see uh, with the screen resolution and or the plane. That means that this drawing is good. There are no issues. With the flash, there is an issue with the X references. Okay, so let's switch back to the other drawing and I think I may have send it by, uh, by default. This is the list by drawing is the view that you get by default and I have switched it uh, uh, before. So let's list by reference type. Click on XREF. It shows you all the extras that are not found, and it says, oh, what is the path? The save path is backslash REF. So I'm going to select all the X references, right click, and say edit select path. I can do find and replace, so let's say if I wanted to search res and convert it, change it into XREF, or you can browse, you can do that. I'm just going to edit the path, uh, right click, edit selected path, and instead of res, I'm going to call it XREFs. Click OK. And uh, notice now I have selected them, uh, converted them to the right path. All of the X references resolved. I'm good to go. I can save this at this point because you have to apply the changes. I'm going to apply the changes here. And it says, hey, do you want to do this? Yes, I do want to do this. I'm here. Um, and click OK. And all your extracts are fixed in one jiffy. Um, so pop quiz. I guess uh, since I see this dot backslash extra, is that a full path or a relative path? Um, I guess you can type your answer in the question. I'll let Bryce get bombarded by this question, you know? <laughs> all those that think Sorry. it's relative all those that think it's a relative path, raise your hands. Oh, okay, I can't see him, but... Oh, raise your hand. Yeah, yeah that's a good one. Not type it in. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. There's a raise hand button. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks, Day to the Rescue. Day to Christ, like, yeah. anything here. Oh, boy. Almost got killed here. Yeah, so now you just gave Since away I have, your best secret. So now, uh, you know, you just put a whole bunch of people out of a job because they don't have to manually change all the paths on their crest. Oh, yeah, I mean, that that's my... my are my favorite tool, and that's hidden like anything. It's not accessible to AutoCAD. You have to go through the Start menu to get to it. And, and it, does, it, was, uh, it was an awesome tool, and it is an awesome tool. It, Sorry, also, it also looks like it's uh, not in LT. I was just looking under the LT folders, and so it looks like it's only provided with AutoCAD, the full AutoCAD. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I did not realize that. Yep. But this was a part of the uh, Express tool, so I think that would be the case at this yeah. So um, since I have a couple more minutes left, uh, Dave, can I uh, show them a couple things, or do you want to close I'll, it out? I'll give you one one minute to show how to freeze a layer uh, without going to the. Oh layer. yeah, I forgot about that one. Yeah, some of the layer other tools here. Uh, the problem is I can't freeze uh, layers here easily because I need to figure out what the layer this object is on. Well, I can uh, quickly do that if I go to home and. Uh, Go to the layer panel, and notice that this is the freeze button. If you click freeze and click on the object right here instead, uh, freeze, and I pick those. Now only that layer got frozen. If you do it through a viewport, it'll only freeze it through the viewport, um, and it's an awesome tool. And a couple other XREF, Express tools that I use with XREF uh, are XList. I'm going to just type it in since I don't have much time. It was kind of bonus thing anyway. You can click on an object. It tells you what those are. And there's another one that I do it uses under blocks. I use copy nested blocks. And, and uh, I can copy objects from the XREF. And one last one, one last one. Right click, if you right click on an XREF, you get the uh, X reference. You can click the XREF like images, which can make it smaller. But this 
open XREF allows you to open it, make the changes that you need, and save it. And now reload it back very quickly rather than editing it in context, you do it the other way around. So thank you very much for uh, letting me present today. I hope you were able to get something out of it. Uh, I'll let Dave take over. All right, thanks, Norman. And uh, it's uh, some great stuff, especially the the, the uh, quick uh, one minute at the end there. Um, some really cool tools. So uh, just to, to wrap up a few things here, there's also some additional resources uh, that's in the PowerPoint. Uh, so I have some links here to the trials for AutoCAD and LT. Um, just make sure that everybody knows that there's been some recent uh, hot fixes for AutoCAD 2017 for both AutoCAD and LT. Um, one of the issues that we've been having uh, quite regularly in uh, AutoCAD is in migrating custom settings. So Hotfix 3 um, fixes a lot of the issues with migrating custom settings. Uh, so um, if, you ha if you're having problems with that, uh, make sure you download the Hotfixes and um, have the latest, greatest tools from our, from our development team. Uh, you know, just again, thank you for joining us. Uh, we are uh, just about out of time. Uh, see if there's any quick questions that uh, I can ask real quick. Let's see. Um, yeah, the uh, the couple of things that uh, Mama was talking about, like X list and stuff, those are an Express tools, so they're not in LT. Um, just about everything else you saw today was available in both AutoCAD and LT, though. Um, there was a question about unreconciled la layers, but I don't think we can get into that um, in the in a, just a minute or so. There was another one in there that says, uh, "What layer you bring the current extra? What layer is current when you bring the extra in?" Yes, it is uh, important that you pay attention to the layer. We typically have an extra layer, or you can bring it on zero, but I typically recommend an extra layer for it. Yeah, and um, somebody's asking about PDFs, and yes, you can uh, in attach a PDF, but you can now in 2017 also convert PDFs to geometry, as long as it's a vector-based PDF file. So uh, if you're working with PDFs, take a look at that if you haven't seen that before. And uh, definitely looks like uh, there are a bunch of people that weren't familiar with the reference manager because they was like, where is it? Where is it? So we put the link in there. Um, it is in the application menu, so you have to go and, and browse to it. it. It's not part of AutoCAD, it's, but it's installed with AutoCAD. Uh, if, if you want information on uh, how to import or convert PDFs into geometry, um, probably the best place to go to is the uh, What's New in AutoCAD 2017 webinar. So just go to the YouTube page and go look for that uh, webinar, and that feature is covered in, in that webinar. And uh, can LT convert PDFs? Uh, Pretty sure that that's in there. I don't see why that would not be in LT. So uh, I, I'm sure that the, um, that's, well, 99.5% sure that that's in LT. Okay. All right. And looks like that's. Uh, there was another LT. one. If I. Okay. Good. Right. Yeah, it would take one more. No, I just one quick, another comment was, if you change a color on the base extra, does it change it in the reference drawing? Not really, it doesn't do it, if, unless and until you use VisRetain set to zero, but I would not recommend that. <laughs> VisRetain is a, a great source of uh, um, tech support cases. Uh, so if you haven't, if you don't know what VisRetain does, look it up in the help file. All right, and uh, again, just thank everybody for joining us. So go ahead and end the webinar at this point. It's the top of the hour. And I look forward to seeing all of you back at our next webinar next week. Same time, same channel. Thanks, and have a great rest of your day.